There are moments that redefine history, and the recent NASA and Harvard joint briefing was one of them. They began by talking about Comet 3i Atlas, an object from interstellar space. But you won't believe what they revealed next. This is not a natural comet. This is the third uh, interstellar object. Uh, in other words, uh, an object that came from outside the solar system. It's pulsing with energy, correcting its own course, and accelerating towards a target with terrifying accuracy. This isn't a random act of the cosmos. It's a guided event. They figured out this object, now named 3i Atlas, was an interstellar visitor. The briefing wasn't a scientific update. It was a global warning about a catastrophic collision that seems almost intentional. The Comet of Fear. In a sterile, windowless briefing room, the mood was anything but calm. The logos of NASA and Harvard University displayed on the screen behind the podium did little to soothe the growing tension among the assembled press. This was an emergency briefing, a term that always spells trouble. But nobody was prepared for the bombshell that was about to drop. Dr. Alistair Finch, a man whose face was etched with the gravity of sleepless nights, stepped up to the microphone. He cleared his throat, and the world held its breath. He spoke of Comet 3i Atlas, a name that, until that moment, was known only to a handful of astronomers. It was first spotted on the 1st of July, a faint smudge of light from beyond our solar system. The initial calculations were comforting. It was a tourist, just passing through, destined to skim past Mars at a safe distance and then disappear back into the void. But, as Dr. Finch explained, the initial calculations were wrong. Dangerously wrong. You see, the thing nobody tells you about tracking celestial objects is that it's a science of probabilities, not certainties. And every new piece of data on 3i Atlas was turning the probabilities into a nightmare. What many overlooked was its speed. It was clocked moving at nearly 87 kilometers per second, faster than any interstellar object we had ever tracked. To put it mildly, it was a bullet fired from the depths of space. Then came the brightness. Its coma, the gassy halo around its core, had doubled in brightness since August, pulsing with strange spikes of ultraviolet energy. This wasn't the behavior of a simple ball of ice and rock. The room fell silent as the final, horrifying slide appeared on the screen. It was a new orbital projection, a stark red line that had tightened its curve. Instead of a wide berth, the line intersected directly with Mars. But that wasn't the worst of it. The comet wasn't just coasting, it was accelerating. Dr. Finch explained that 3i Atlas was releasing plumes of gas in deliberate clock-like pulses once every 17 minutes. Each pulse was a micro-acceleration, a tiny nudge, perfectly calculated to steer it. It was acting less like a comet and more like a guided missile. The joint NASA and Harvard briefing was no longer a scientific update. It was a declaration that our solar system had an intruder, and it was on a catastrophic collision course. The numbers were staggering. The comet has an estimated mass of 10 billion tons. The impact, scheduled for the 26th of September, 2025, would release the energy equivalent of 2 million megatons of TNT. A crater 60 kilometers wide and 5 kilometers deep would be blasted into the Martian surface. The briefing ended not with a Q&A, but with a stark, chilling statement. This was a planetary-scale threat, and the clock was ticking. But the real fear comes from a detail hidden in the data. A message in the stars. What turns a simple comet into a guided weapon? That was the question haunting every scientist at NASA, Harvard, and beyond. A natural comet is a dirty snowball, tumbling through space at the mercy of gravity. It doesn't course correct. It doesn't accelerate with rhythmic precision. The behavior of 3i Atlas was, to put it simply, impossible. Many people are crazy about the idea of alien life, but this was the first time that mainstream science was forced to confront the possibility that we were not just seeing a rock, but a piece of technology. The theory, championed by renowned astrophysicist Avi Loeb of Harvard, was as terrifying as it was logical. He proposed that 3i Atlas was not a comet at all, but an interstellar probe, a derelict craft, or worse, a deliberately targeted object sent by an advanced civilization. 
This wasn't just wild speculation. The evidence was mounting. When the Goldstone Observatory bounced radar off the object, the signals that came back were described as hard metallic returns instead of soft ice signatures. This suggested a solid core, perhaps made of alloys not found in nature, hiding an artificial interior. It was a machine masquerading as a comet. This stunning revelation sent astronomers scrambling to re-examine old data from telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope and the newer, more powerful James Webb Space Telescope. They were looking for similar anomalies, for other interstellar visitors that might have been misunderstood. The James Webb Space Telescope, with its incredible sensitivity, had been designed to look for the faintest light from the dawn of time. Now, it was being used to hunt for clues about a potential threat in our own cosmic backyard. Had we seen objects like this before and simply dismissed them? The case of Oumuamua, another strange interstellar visitor from a few years prior, was suddenly seen in a new, more sinister light. Then came the photographs from the European Space Agency's Mars Express Orbiter. It captured three tiny glinting objects in a perfect triangular formation, holding a steady orbit high above the Martian plains. They hadn't been there a month ago. The terrifying implication was that 3i Atlas had already deployed scout probes. It wasn't just a bullet. It was a payload delivery system. The object wasn't just going to hit Mars. It seemed to be preparing the battlefield. This was no longer about a natural disaster. This was about contact, and potentially about conflict. The next step would decide the fate of two worlds. Humanity's last stand. The NASA and Harvard briefing galvanized the world into action. The squabbles and politics that usually dominated global headlines faded into insignificance. Faced with a potential existential threat, humanity did something it rarely does. It united. Emergency task forces were convened, bringing together the brilliant minds of not just NASA, but also ESA. The mission was clear. Intercept and neutralize 3i Atlas before it reached Mars. This wasn't just about saving the Red Planet. It was about our own survival. You see, what many people don't realize is that a massive impact on Mars wouldn't just be a spectacular light show. Computer models showed that billions of tons of debris would be ejected into space. A significant portion of that debris would be catapulted into an Earth-crossing orbit. Within a decade, our own planet would be navigating a minefield of Martian rock. But the biggest fear was biological or rather, technological. If 3i Atlas was an alien probe, what might it be carrying? The models predicted a non-zero chance that engineered microbes or even self-replicating nanotechnology could ride the ejecta all the way to Earth. It was a planetary infection risk of the highest order. The plan, codenamed Operation Chimera, was audacious, desperate, and born from the terrifying realization that we were out of time. The thing is, an object moving at this incredible speed, coming from outside our solar system, made all the standard deflection plans useless. There was no time to land a probe and gently push it. This called for brute force. The strategy involved a two-pronged attack, a one-two punch designed in secret. The first wave would be a fleet of hypervelocity kinetic impactors. You see, these weren't missiles. They were essentially giant rods of pure tungsten, the size of telephone poles fired from advanced electromagnetic railguns mounted on a dozen secretly repurposed SpaceX starships. The goal wasn't to destroy the comet, which could create a deadly shotgun blast of fragments that would still hit Mars. The goal was to nudge it, to use the immense force of these projectiles, striking the object at tens of thousands of miles per hour, to slightly alter its trajectory. It was a game of cosmic billiards where the stakes were planetary survival and a single miscalculation could crack the cue ball. But that was just the opening move. If the kinetic impactors failed to do the job, the second wave was the ultimate gamble, a nuclear option. A next-generation stealth spacecraft, dubbed Firefly, was already in high orbit, carrying a payload of several high-yield nuclear devices. Its mission was a standoff detonation. By exploding the devices a precise distance from the comet, the intense, instantaneous wave of X-rays and radiation would vaporize the surface on one side. This would create a massive artificial jet of outgassing that would act like a powerful rocket engine, pushing the entire object off course. 
The thing nobody tells you about using nukes in space is the incredible risk. A miscalculation in the timing or distance by even a fraction of a second could shatter three I Atlas, turning one giant bullet into a million pieces of deadly shrapnel. It was a testament to humanity's ingenuity, a plan built on the edge of known physics, and a terrifying admission that we were down to our very last chance. But time was running out, and the comet kept pulsing closer. A message for mankind. As the fleet of interceptors, codenamed Operation Chimera, races towards its deep space rendezvous, we are left to wait. Here on Earth, life continues, but with a new, profound sense of vulnerability. People watch the sky, wondering if the faint star that is 3 I Atlas will be a harbinger of doom or the catalyst for our next great leap. The entire event forces us to look in the mirror. Are we alone? And if we aren't, are we prepared for the answer? The thing is, this entire crisis might be a misunderstanding on a cosmic scale. What if this isn't an attack? Think about it. The relentless 17-minute pulsing of the engine is so regular, so clock-like. What if it's not a propulsion system, but a signal? A cosmic Morse code, a message patiently repeating itself as it travels from star to star. Perhaps the targeting of Mars isn't an act of aggression, but an attempt at communication or even a delivery. Avi Loeb and his team at Harvard have theorized that an advanced civilization might use a planet like Mars as a sort of mailbox, depositing a probe with information, their history, their science, in a place where an emerging species like ours might eventually find it. You see, they might have sent three I Atlas centuries or millennia ago, never anticipating we'd have the technology to shoot it down. But not all things are what they seem, and other, even stranger possibilities have been whispered in the halls of science. What if the object's purpose isn't communication, but construction? Some analysts have proposed that 3i Atlas is a terraforming machine, a planetary seed designed to slam into Mars and release a pre-engineered payload that could, over centuries, kickstart an atmosphere. The thing nobody tells you is that this could be a benevolent act, preparing a second home for humanity. Or it could be preparing a new home for them. A darker theory suggests the object is a von Neumann probe, a self-replicating machine whose only goal is to use the raw materials of a planet like Mars to build copies of itself, spreading like a virus from star to star. And then there's the most bizarre theory of all. What if we are fundamentally wrong about it being a machine? The pulsing is rhythmic, like a heartbeat, the energy signature is organic in its complexity. Some fringe biologists have suggested it could be a life form, a silicon-based creature that drifts through the void, a cosmic leviathan. Its targeting of Mars might not be a choice, but a biological imperative. Like a salmon returning to a spawning ground it hasn't seen in a million years. In that scenario, Operation Chimera isn't an interception. It's a hunt. And what about the discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope? In the months since that secret briefing, astronomers have found two other objects in the far reaches of our solar system with similar, anomalous energy signatures. They are too far away to be a threat, but their presence suggests that 3i Atlas is not unique. Our solar system may have had many such visitors over the eons. What many overlooked is what this truly means. It means the traffic is constant, We've been living next to a cosmic highway and never even knew it. This raises an even bigger question. Are we missing a key detail? Is the universe far stranger and more crowded than we ever imagined? We've been looking for radio signals, but maybe the real messages are written in the language of physics, delivered by Courier. As we stand on this cosmic precipice, one final controversial question remains. If it was a message, did we just declare war by trying to destroy it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more answers to the universe's greatest mysteries.